And uh, the, next, the next question I have for you is, uh, you said people are highly influenced by their environment. Yeah. And um, in regards to this, um, what are the origins of the ideas that you are promoting? Your ideas. The origins, okay. I lived in New York and there were all kinds of people. Irish, Greeks, French, Jews, <coughs> Italians, Norwegians. All my friends were mixed. And, but I couldn't deal with them if they went to church or synagogue or practice their religion. So I began to turn kids around when I was a kid. I began to talk to them about evolution and what science means. And I had to do that in order to deal with them because they remained professional Arabs and professional Irishmen. They would say, did you know that Lincoln was Irish, lad? You know, and all the Irish spoke the same way because they came from the same environment. The Jewish kids who talk like this. So if you miss the bus, you'll wait on little longer, you'll catch a bus. But they all spoke that way. The Italian kids, Italian kids say, hey, where are you going, huh? That's where they spoke, in New York. And I can see where they're coming from. I never had a kid in New York say, I say, old chap, are you a flyer? That's in England. They speak that way. So you can see how countries influence a language. There was important people in Spain that lisp when they talk. So what's new? And the Spanish people in that community, all of them lisp, speak with their tongue like that, because important people did. There's a book called uh, What Veblen Taught, Torsten Veblen. He wrote a book called The Theory of the Leisure Class. And he was a, he was a college professor and they kicked him out of school because he wrote books on the origin of behavior. And so they built a special school for Veblen in New York called the New School for Social Research because the establishment didn't like what he taught. Now here's what he said. He said in the old days, aristocrats used to hire people to stand in the hallway like that, do nothing. The more people you had standing doing nothing, the more respect you commanded. But these people were uneducated. They were there to protect the people, too. They used to wipe their nose on their sleeves all the time. And it looked very bad because the guy put new clothing on them, but they used to wipe their nose. So they didn't like that, so they put buttons here on the sleeve. So the guy turned to say, well, yeah. and then they put the buttons in different patterns until that stopped. And that's how come he had buttons on a man's jacket. The Veblen used to describe the origin of all things. Do you understand that? We still have buttons on a men's mm -hmm. jacket which are not used for anything, but it came from that. Then there was a short king that designed high heels, but he permitted anybody in the court to wear high heels because he wanted to stand above everybody else. Veblen wrote about that. He, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, then, there was a an important woman in the court, princess, that had a sloping chin. So she designed garments, I'm sure you've seen them, that look like that, to consider to cover the sloping chin. And everybody in the court said, gee, I'd like that, because the princess is wearing that. You know, they're like <clears throat> monkeys. They imitate. People want, if you show a movie star next to a Mercedes, a guy wants to buy a Mercedes. You have to do that if you want to sell cars. So. I'm saying Veblen wrote about all these things to show people that we're victims of culture. 